Hello and welcome RC Gym in the hangar. We will be all over the place comparing footage out in the awesome autumn scenery with the DJI Osmo Nano. I bought this with my own money, it's not a real review, it's rather my question. Should I use an action cam on my Chimera 7 for example, or also on something like a 5 inch uh, the Era 5 inch drone that I have here. Here I have O3, so between O3 and DJI Osmo Nano there's quite a substantial difference. Here I even have DJI O4, this is the spoiler, it's really hard to justify the extra spend. I will try to answer all your questions in this video, so let's jump right into this. The last three or four years almost exclusively used DJI O3 or O4, having no weight penalty, didn't have to bring an extra camera, extra batteries. So now this little fellow here claims to be almost as good as the DJI Action 5 Pro just in a very compact form format. So this is around 50 grams, this is 150 grams. This sacrifices battery life a bit and some functions. It doesn't have a display in that form, but you can attach the display. My main gripe with the extra camera here is once again, jello. You always need to have some vibration dampeners, very good props that are balanced well good motors, you want to use something like ND filters to bring the shutter time down. And nowadays we can use software really nicely to eliminate cello to yeah, almost 90%. I will show you a few clips now. It's diminishing returns. I mean, first you see bad props used, no ND filter. I cruise with a low throttle here with my seven inch drone and I induce a lot of cello visible. So it's shaking all over footage is not really usable and it's similar words on both. And on the second run I enabled the gyroflow effect in Adobe Premiere in post on both sides. So both use the gyro data from the camera from the same copter and the O4 still has visible jello and the Osmo Nano copes a little bit better. So that was a surprise that Osmo footage could be stabilized and not only the shakes, but also cello went away to some degree. Not all of it, but to some degree. The other day I had better props. I had an ND filter on the O4, none on the Nano. And I will switch back and forth here and reveal at the end uh, which camera is what. And you see quite some surprising results from this. I might have set the white balance manually here a bit too yellowish, but it's really, it's quite powerful how the, the trees look currently. If I disable the top layer now, we switch to the other cam and you see this one has way more jello. This is almost jello free and this one shakes like crazy. You will see if I enable the gyro flow plugin, it will get rid of most of the jello. And this, the bottom camera here looks way more natural in my opinion. Compared to this, this is almost an Instagram filter. This is 4K 60 and this is 4K 30 to get a 
better stabilization. Yeah, I think I can reveal it now. Ultra contrasty, not so cello heavy footage is uh, DJI 04, the onboard cam. Artificial sharpening, uh, maybe that's also a setting that I cranked up to have a good and sharp live image. We now see the DJI Nano image. The greens are greener. It's still quite contrasty. It's in high bitrate. So in theory, this should look splendid. The amount of colors here, like the different shades of orange, red, greenish. If we check out the 04, it might just be a problem with the color balance, with the white balance. 04 is a bit too much for my taste here. Let's also apply gyro flow to both. Standard settings of the gyro flow plugin. We get pretty good job of reducing that nasty cello. And if we could, I don't have an ND filter yet, but if I apply an ND filter on the nano cam, cello is even more reduced. So I will, during playback, I will disable gyro flow now. It shakes more and also it has more micro stutters, more cello vision. And once gyro flow is, yeah, and gyro flow is free, by the way, if you don't know about gyro flow, um, it's way better than the built-in stabilization. It has more features, more functions, and it's not that much more work for you. And it just looks, yeah, now it looks quite good. In some scenes where I have really, really bad cello, gyro flow cannot hide all of that. And especially if you look at the edge of the image where the distortion is the most, you still see jello coming through. Gyroflow stabilized 04 is just butter in that case. I see no movement, no jello whatsoever. So I'm very pleased with the stabilization of the onboard cam. Gyro stabilization. We can shut off gyro flow here as well. And you see it mainly reduces the shakes and it also accounts for some distortion. The more I see it, the more I like the Osmo Nano colors and color rendition. Yeah, I have it now to texture plus one and it's still not 100% sharp. So I'm not sure what's going on with the sharpness. In theory, in 4K30, it should be the sharpest, but uh, it doesn't look that sharp. And I tried to use the best props I have on my copter, so the Chimera is not extremely vibrant. <laughs> but this is, this is amazing. What kind of cello shakes? Gyro flow is able to filter away magically. It looks quite decent, even though it's inferior. And this can ruin your shot. If you want to sell these images, for example, you cannot have any cello in it. It will make you look like an amateur. I will not be using the Nano that much. I will keep it as lightweight as possible. O4 is already really, really good. This thing here is more prone to cello than the DJI 03 or 04. In some occasions, the gyro data, so the movement data, which are recorded inside here as well, they can be totally off and ruin the stabilization, either the in cam stabilization or the later post production gyro flow stabilization. The RPM dive at rock steady on. This for me is the reason why I never use rock steady here, because I don't want to bake in the stabilization in the footage already. Because if it messes up the shot, it's gone. In the wide field of view mode, it will record gyro data and I can use gyro flow freeware very easily in post-production and do whatever I want. I can make a horizon lock, I can zoom in, zoom out as much as I want. Of course, it helps if I use a 4 by 3 aspect ratio because then you have more real estate just to move around. The only downside, 4 by 3 aspect ratio only goes up to 50 frames and not to 60. I used 30 then. 
If you use ultrawide or dwarp standard, you will get no gyro data in the file and gyro flow cannot help you then. If you use the internal stabilization, you can have all the different field of view modes. In most normal situations, the Rocksteady stabilization did not freak out, so it's quite decent. Banana has a bit better dynamic range than the O3, quite similar to the O4. I just printed out this GPU case. If you have the ERA and if you need this mount, I will link it of course below. Otherwise, uh, this GPU case with a normal GoPro fingers mount beneath it found on Thingiverse. And I just created this little TPU part with GoPro fingers and with the interface for their mount here. So you can also download this part. The beauty of this installation now is we can set up the thing with the remote here. And I'm in 4K60. Here it's quite obvious to see the dynamic range in the center, the church. On the left side you see it all the time. On the right side it's overexposed when we are in the woods and only revealed after we leave the woods. The sky is bright and now it's fixed on the right side. The left is a bit narrower and also one advantage of the camera sitting higher up. You don't have the props in view on the Nano on the left side. My standard light handling setting flying to this garage where it's quite dark. And here you already see the bright outside and how quickly it changes to the bright sunlight here. It works really, really good here. Let's briefly talk about color and sharpness. The color it looks way more natural on this one here as opposed to the DJI O3 or O4. And sharpness, I dial it down, but even if the texture, which is sharpness, if the texture is increased, it doesn't always look totally sharp. This might be due to vibrations. When just riding with my scooter, it looked sharp, but yeah. I will uh, have a table now of recommended settings to get the best footage. Colors 10 bit and normal because I don't want to grade it. Bit rate high, I don't know why this is not standard. It's 110 megabits instead of 17 megabits. For me, it's a no brainer to go with the higher bit rate. Exposure value down to minus 0.3 is a little tip. You could even go to minus 0.7 to make the image a bit darker because it tends to overexpose and yeah, if it's too bright, the footage is lost. But if it's a bit too dark, you can brighten it up in post and you don't lose anything. The ISO limit, I would also bring it down to maybe 3200 as a maximum ISO. Do not give this camera the room to go all the way up to 12,000 or 125,000 ISO. It will be very noisy and not nice unless you fly in really dark settings but then you have the night mode. Motion blur setting is just if you use the built-in stabilization and there I think I use daily. Stabilization I will set it to off and have the field of view mode in wide and either use 4k 60 with 16.9 for action shots or 4k 30 and 4x3 for maximum stabilization. The battery life surprised me here. I had the DJI Action 2, square one, which had not a good battery life and also not a lot of internal storage. Minimum 30 to 45 minutes of standalone time. And then you just connect it to the screen module and it charges it up in like 15 or 20 minutes. So that's really convenient. And also this thing comes in 64 or 128 gigs of internal storage. You should get the 128 gigs version because you always want to use the internal storage. It's way faster in transferring. If you use the storage card, so move files from internal to storage card. Storage card transfer speeds are like 90 megabytes to your computer. And the internal storage is like 400 megabytes. It's amazingly fast and so, so convenient to transfer footage. Something that I also like about Osmo Nano are the really versatile mounting options. I mean, their magnetic clamp thing is, is ingenious, but also the things like this necklace and magnet mount 
they make it really easy for me to have a nice point of view. For my scooter reviews, for example, you can have it on your t-shirt so it doesn't swing too much. You also get this cap mount here. You get the little suction cup mount. Probably my favorite use of the Osmo Nano was uh, is to be seen in the end of this video. Really, really cool. Upside down in your car and very easy to set up. Press start and stop. It also has voice commands. So really great. I could even use the clamp from the old Action 2, Osmo Action 2, but it's not a 100% tight fit. I mean, it will not come off, but it can shake and maybe this was resonating too much on my 5-inch drone and maybe this caused the weird issues that I had. These clamps, you can get two of them for 10 euros. Maybe you know now, should you get this just for the drones? I wouldn't. Absolutely love it for my YouTube videos for different camera angles. The, the possibility to use any metal surface, fun and creative second or third angle is really, really helpful. And this camera is just such a good quality in very tiny format, almost as good as its bigger brother. It's even uh, waterproof up to 10 meters. This is waterproof to 20 meters. So I will maybe use this as a dive cam, as a snorkeling cam as well just on the scuba gear up there. Let me know in the comments, how do you like the DJI cams? Is there any reason why you still prefer GoPro over DJI cams? No real innovations on the GoPro cams anymore. The price battle here is totally won by DJI. Say what you want about DJI, but their hardware is really top notch. I'm using their microphone, which dangles down there. I'm not sponsored by DJI. I'm just blown away by the quality that they deliver. Okay, with that all being said, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.